which of the following is true about interquartile range now let us understand so first part second part third part fourth part so as you can see over here as you can see over here this is a quartile a normal quartile where all the four parts are equal now q1 q2 q3 q1 to q3 this is called inter quartile range that is iqr that is iqr now it describes the middle value q2 this is median so it is not the iqr it divides the distribution into two halves again it is not correct okay because it is the middle part it covers the middle 50% of observation now this is true but this is true only in case of normal distribution it is affected by extreme values of distribution this is a far better answer than option number 3 so if this would have been a pgi chandigarh question then my answer would have been 3 and 4 both my answer would have been 3 and 4 both now question 15 what is the relative risk of this table now whenever you are given a question to calculate relative risk you should always ensure one thing that is you are going to make this table yes and always remember the new drug should be above and the placebo should be next cancer no cancer so 10 40 990 960 1000 1000 so relative risk will be 10 by 1000 divided by 40 by 1000 so 1 by 4 it will be 0.25 it will be 0.25 so answer to this question was option number 1 Question 16 In a group of patients presenting to a hospital emergency with abdominal pain 30% people have acute appendicitis okay so let us take appendicitis no appendicitis there are 100 people with abdominal pain 30 have appendicitis 70 don't have fever present fever absent So, seventy percent of patients with appendicitis have fever. So, seventy percent of thirty, that is twenty-one. Forty percent of patients without appendicitis have fever. So, forty percent of seventy, that is twenty-eight. Now, we are calculating the PPV. So, PPV will be. Twenty-one divided by forty-nine. That is three by seven. That is three by seven. Yes. So answer to this question was option number one. Option number one. Okay. Question seventeen. In a study of effectiveness of pertussis vaccine in preventive pertussis whooping cough, the following data were collected by study siblings of children who were diseased. what is the secondary attack rate for fully immunized now see the catch over here is the word fully immunized so you are only going to consider this particular row so secondary attack rate number of secondary cases that were 400 so 400 by 4000 into 100 so answer will come as 10% so 10% of the siblings who have been vaccinated will still have this and therefore the vaccine efficacy 
the vaccine efficacy is 100 minus 10 which is equal to 90 percent yes so next time you can also get a question where you are requested or required to form to calculate the vaccine efficacy okay in a village there are 200 eligible couples 38 have undergone vasectomy 2 had undergone tubectomy so sterilization is 40 coitus interpest 20 we don't count that ocp is 20 condom users are 10 now iud if you add the iud properly the iud over here will come as will come over here as 60 now effectiveness for sterilization it is 100 percent for osup it is 100 percent for condom it is 50 percent for iud it is 95 percent now these values are given by the government of india so 40 20 5 57 so the total is 122 divided by 200 this will come as 61 percent so answer to this question was option number two answer to this question was option number two yes okay question 19 if birth rate of an urban phc now urban phc we have 50000 population is 20 per thousand calculate the number of pregnant females whose names are entered in the registered okay so 20 per thousand into 50000 so 1000 is the number of pregnancies sorry is the number of live births now to calculate the number of pregnancies for a year we have to add 10 percent to it so 1000 plus 10 percent of 1000 so it is 1100 now number of pregnancies at a given time is 1100 divided by 2 now why do we do this 2 divide by 2 you did not get to know it just have a rough idea see pregnancy is 9 months in rural setup they will come after 3 months so left is 6 months so every year you can understand there are 2 cohorts from this the division factor 2 has come so this will be 550 yes okay question 20 for a group of 250 people the 40th percentile is very simple it is the 40th percent of 250 so the value will be 100th the value will be 100th yes <laughs> okay now let us look into the image based question now what is this this is a stem and a leaf diagram now what is this encircled 3 2 32 so remember in a stem and leaf it is very simple you have to first read the stem and then the leaf so there can be other questions maximum value 55 minimum value 19 mode 32 yes you can have all such forms of questions the star in the figure represents the amount of residual chlorine this water sample is likely from so you can see it is around one so swimming pool it is one kill cyclops five drinking water post disaster 0.7 normal drinking water 0.5 yes okay this is a common feature of now you can see there is edema this is a typical feature of epidemic drop c epidemic drop c okay so basically there is non-inflammatory bilateral swelling of legs so there is fluid overload leading to cardiac failure it is basically because of contamination of mustard oil with argimum oil the toxin is sanguinarin the toxin is sanguinarin the test which we do is nitric acid test 
we do the nitric acid test yes whereas the most sensitive is the paper chromatography paper chromatography okay question 24 for the child the mid arm circumference now this is severe malnutrition yellow is moderate malnutrition green normal so answer is option number 4 yes so more than 13.5 normal 12.5 to 13.5 moderate less than 12.5 severe yes this is the mid arm circumference distribution okay so median survival in months now median survival when 50% people are alive so let us see over here if you see this is 50% so roughly it is corresponding over here which is 66 months so basically this is more about recognizing the graph and reading it properly yes so with this we come to the end of your discussion